Hey everybody, it's your friend 4G, and today we're diving into the powerful world of keto. Now, you've probably heard about the ketogenic diet. It's everywhere these days, and for good reason. It's helped countless people torch fat, boost their energy, and feel amazing. But let's be real, starting keto isn't always a walk in the park. There are some common pitfalls that can trip you up and keep you from seeing the incredible results you're capable of. You see, like any lifestyle change, keto requires a shift in mindset and habits. And sometimes, without even realizing it, we make small mistakes that have a big impact on our progress. Things like not tracking your macros correctly or falling into the trap of too much protein can really throw your body out of whack and stall your weight loss journey. But don't worry, I've got your back. In this video, we're breaking down the top 5 keto mistakes I see people making time and time again, and I'm giving you practical, actionable solutions to fix them. We're talking simple tweaks that can make all the difference in your keto journey. So, if you're ready to unlock the full fat-burning potential of keto, stick around. Alright, let's talk carbs. Now, we all know that keto is all about drastically reducing your carbohydrate intake, right? This forces your body to switch from burning glucose for fuel to burning fat, putting you in that coveted state of ketosis. But here's the thing, not all carbs are created equal, and even on keto, you're still allowed a small amount. The key is knowing how many grams of net carbs you can handle without kicking yourself out of ketosis. Now this is where tracking becomes your secret weapon. See, it's easy to underestimate the carb content in certain foods. You might think you're doing great, but those sneaky carbs from sauces, dressings, or even some veggies can really add up. And before you know it, you're over your limit and wondering why you're not seeing the results you're after. Trust me, I get it. Tracking can seem tedious at first, but think of it like this. It's an investment in your health and your goals. By diligently tracking your macros, especially in the beginning, you gain a crystal clear understanding of what you're putting into your body. You become a nutritional detective, uncovering hidden carb sources and making informed choices about your food. And the best part is, there are tons of awesome apps out there that make tracking a breeze. My Fitness Pal, Carb Manager, Chronometer. These are just a few examples of tools that can simplify the process and even provide you with valuable insights into your eating habits. But it's not just about the numbers, guys. Tracking also empowers you to take control of your keto journey. It allows you to experiment with different foods and find what works best for your body. You start to develop an intuitive sense of portion sizes and carb counts, making it easier to maintain ketosis in the long run. So, if you're serious about crushing your keto goals, don't underestimate the power of tracking those carbs. It's a game changer, my friends. Now let's talk protein. It's the building block of our bodies, essential for muscle growth and repair. But here's the thing. More protein doesn't always equal better results, especially on keto. You see, when you consume protein, your body converts a small portion of it into glucose through a process called gluconeogenesis. Now, this isn't necessarily a bad thing. In fact, your body needs some glucose to function properly. But if you're eating way too much protein, that glucose production can increase, potentially kicking you out of ketosis. And remember, ketosis is where the magic happens. It's the metabolic state where your body becomes a fat-burning machine. So, how much protein is too much? Well, it varies from person to person depending on factors like your activity level, body composition, and individual goals. But as a general rule of thumb, aim for moderate protein intake on keto. Think of it as a supporting character, not the star of the show. Now, this is where fat comes in. That's right, fat is your best friend on keto. It's what keeps you feeling full and satisfied, provides sustained energy, and fuels your body in the absence of carbs. So, if you're feeling constantly hungry or experiencing those dreaded energy slumps, chances are you need to bump up your healthy fat intake. Think avocados, nuts and seeds, olive oil, fatty fish. These are all excellent sources of healthy fats that will keep you satiated and energized throughout the day. And don't be afraid to experiment with different types of fat to find what your body responds to best. Remember, keto is all about finding the right balance for your unique needs. So dial in your protein intake, embrace those healthy fats, and watch your body thrive. All right, let's talk about the dreaded keto flu. You know what I'm talking about? Those pesky symptoms like headaches, fatigue, muscle cramps, and brain fog that some people experience during the initial stages of keto. It's not fun, but the good news is it's usually temporary and totally preventable. The main culprit behind the keto flu, electrolyte imbalance. You see, when you drastically reduce carbs, your body produces less insulin. And one of insulin's jobs is to hold on to sodium. So, with lower insulin levels, your body flushes out more sodium, 
along with other important electrolytes like potassium and magnesium. Now, these electrolytes are crucial for a whole host of bodily functions, including nerve signaling, muscle contractions, and maintaining fluid balance. So, when they're out of whack, you feel it. But here's the thing, replenishing those electrolytes can make a world of difference in how you feel during that initial keto transition. So, how do you do it? Well, first off, don't be afraid to salt your food. I know, I know, we've been conditioned to fear salt, but on keto, it's your friend. Sprinkle some high-quality sea salt on your meals, or even try sipping on some bone broth. It's a natural source of electrolytes. But it's not just about sodium. Potassium and magnesium are equally important. Load up on leafy greens, avocados, nuts, and seeds. These are all excellent sources of these essential minerals. And if you're struggling to meet your electrolyte needs through diet alone, consider supplementing with electrolyte capsules or powders. Remember, feeling your best on keto is about more than just macros. It's about nourishing your body with the essential nutrients it needs to thrive. So, keep those electrolytes in check and say goodbye to the keto flu. All right, let's talk about something that's absolutely crucial for overall health, but especially important on a ketogenic diet hydration. You see, water is involved in just about every bodily function, from regulating body temperature to transporting nutrients and flushing out waste products. And when you're on keto, staying properly hydrated becomes even more vital. Now you might be thinking, but Thomas, I drink plenty of water, and that might be true. But here's the thing. When you first transition to a ketogenic diet, your body starts shedding water weight like crazy. This is because glycogen, the stored form of glucose, binds to water in your muscles. As your glycogen stores deplete on keto, that water gets released, leading to initial rapid weight loss. But here's the catch. If you're not replenishing those fluids, you can easily become dehydrated, and dehydration can manifest in a whole host of ways, from fatigue and headaches to constipation and even stalled weight loss. That's right, dehydration can actually hinder your progress. So, how much water should you be drinking on keto? Well, a good rule of thumb is to aim for half your body weight in ounces of water per day. So if you weigh 150 pounds, aim for 75 ounces of water. And if you're physically active or live in a hot climate, you'll need even more. Now I know chugging down water all day long can seem daunting, but there are ways to make it more enjoyable. Try infusing your water with slices of lemon, cucumber, or berries for a refreshing twist or sip on herbal teas or bone broth throughout the day. They contribute to your overall fluid intake. Remember, staying hydrated is like giving your body a mini spa treatment from the inside out, so make it a priority and watch your keto journey flourish. Let's talk about those keto snacks. Now, one of the great things about the ketogenic diet is that it helps to curb cravings and keep you feeling fuller for longer. But that doesn't mean you're immune to the occasional snack attack. And here's where things can get a little tricky. You see, the market is flooded with keto-friendly snack options these days. From keto cookies and bars to cheese puffs and chocolate treats, it seems like there's a low-carb alternative for everything. And while these snacks can definitely have their place in a healthy keto lifestyle, it's important to remember that they're not all created equal. Just because something is labeled keto doesn't automatically make it healthy or calorie-free. In fact, many keto snacks are surprisingly calorie-dense, and it's easy to overindulge without even realizing it. And remember, when it comes to weight loss, calories still count, even on keto. So, how do you navigate the world of keto snacks without derailing your progress? Well, first and foremost, focus on whole, unprocessed foods as much as possible. Think things like a handful of nuts, a hard-boiled egg, or some celery sticks with almond butter. These options provide satiating protein and healthy fats without the added sugars and processed ingredients found in many packaged snacks. Now, if you do choose to indulge in keto snacks, do so mindfully. Pay attention to portion sizes and be aware of the calorie and macro content. And remember, snacks should complement your meals, not replace them. And here's a little bonus tip. Don't be afraid to get creative in the kitchen. There are tons of delicious and healthy keto snack recipes out there that you can whip up at home using simple whole food ingredients. Trust me, your taste buds and your waistline will thank you. So there you have it the top five keto mistakes that could be holding you back from reaching your full potential. Remember, embarking on any new journey comes with its own learning curve, and keto is no exception. The key is to be kind to yourself, embrace the process, and learn from your mistakes. Now I want to hear from you. What are some of the keto mistakes you've made along the way, and how did you overcome them? Share your experiences in the comments below. Your insights might just help someone else on their own keto adventure. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, 
subscribe to the channel for more awesome content, and hit that notification bell so you never miss an update. Until next time, stay healthy, stay motivated, and keep crushing those keto goals.